everyone, and welcome to another exciting edition of Geeks Not Nerds, the podcast. I'm Captain Logan. And I am Vince. Today we're going to talk about the degeneralization of the Inglomanish language, Vince. What? <laughs> Talking about my degeneration. Dude, you know, like, you just said stuff because, like, you know, you know, like, like, you're, you're talking. No. Totally. <laughs> like, what? Like, like, it was bogus to begin with, but, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Right. <laughs> 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 I know, right? I know, right? I heard some old people say that the other day. Oh, no. I wanted to slap them. I'm like, hey, quit being a kid. So today, we're, or, or more to the point, quit sounding like a moron, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, like why, why would you want to lower yourself to sound like the younger generation right now? Uh, yeah, today we're going to talk a little bit about the degeneration of language, or what Vince and I kind of feel is maybe uh, the de- degenerate that thing. The generification of language. That's right. Uh, and we're going to talk about how uh, current uh, current popular slang, uh, text speak, uh, all of that kind of fun stuff is uh, potentially killing brain cells, making us lose vocabulary, and making Captain Logan have no idea what he's saying. I mean, just a, you saying that just sparked a thought, actually. A lot of people that I've talked to say, I can't write. I just can't do it. And they say... Well, maybe if you wouldn't spend all your time doing net speak, maybe if you'd spend your time, I don't know, forming complete thoughts. Yeah, right. Then maybe maybe you'd be able to write something. I mean, shorthand being what it is is useful, but not when that's when, when your thoughts are. Which that's not the only thing that prevents people from being able to write. I think there's a lot of low self-esteem issues that kind of factor into that or laziness. Well, sure, and uh, as far as writing goes, people get it in their in their heads at first before they get started that because it doesn't cost anything, it must be easy. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've I've always thought that people are like, uh, or just because uh, you know it doesn't require any obvious visual skills. I know that sounds odd, but I mean, like drawing looks hard. Mm-hmm. Writing doesn't look hard. Writing is words on a page. Everyone every day puts words on a page. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't look hard, but then you start to do it, and you go, oh, this must suck for some reason. Uh, and so what, what, you, what you end up discovering is that, uh, yeah, you have to make complete thoughts. You have to actually think things through, which mm-hmm. is something that people are becoming increasingly less good at and... Uh, more and it's seeming more and more foreign to people because we're in an age of instant gratification and we're in an age of instant communication. And both of those things together uh, equal doing everything on the fly. Mm-hmm. And you, you don't have to think things out anymore because we don't send letters to people anymore. We're finding ourselves uh, where, like, you know, you can you can you can instantly. Uh, convey any idea to anyone at any time, assuming you both have computers or phones or something, right? And you know, you know, it used to it used to be that that, that uh, you'd sit down and you'd write a letter to your aunt Betty or whatever, and she wasn't going to see it for a week or two, and it was probably the it may, it may be the only correspondence you're going to have with her for the next six months or a year, and you want to make sure that all your thoughts, uh, you know, are, are clear and concise and, and, uh, and uh, that, you know, she, she gets to read something that doesn't look like, who threw this up all over this paper? <laughs> you know, it's funny that uh, I still, to some extent, expect a slower turnover rate. I, we've been in this email generation for years, <laughs> and yet here I am, like, after we did the live podcast their most recent live podcast. Mm-hmm. I uh, One of our videos, cool, or one of our viewers, rather, Coolio Vids, said, uh, have you guys watched G.I. Joe? What do, you, what, would you, what do you like about G.I. Joe? And I said, well, I haven't really watched anything good. And I said, in fact, if you have a recommendation, send us an email and let us know what's good. And there I was. said, title it G.I. Joe Vince. And uh, I expected it to be about a week before it showed up, and then he sent it that night. It's not like he had to send it UPS, Vince. <laughs> he was sitting at his computer, obviously, listening to us on our computer. And uh, yet here I am. I go, oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> he sent me a message. Progress is such a catch-22, isn't it, Vince? Yeah. Because... You know, when you're stupid, sometimes you forget it happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... 
and what I mean is, this isn't all a bad thing, and we're maybe laying this out kind of like, kind of like it seems like it is. But once again, uh, we're technical, or at least we're guys who use, you know, a lot of a lot of tech. Uh, it doesn't mean we know anything about it, but we certainly use it. Uh, you know, we make a lot of videos, we do a lot of podcasts, and we've even done the live thing. And uh, I, I don't even I don't even know a lot of folks who who do the live thing. And uh, like you know, I, I saw I saw somebody do it once, thought it was really cool, so I thought I'd try it. I, li- I like I like to try new things, and I and I and I like trying out these new technologies whenever they happen. I don't think they're a bad thing. I really mm-hmm. think that, that that it's that that it's good progress, but. Uh, Everything has its uh, pros and cons, mm-hmm. and also, uh, it's sort of like when you have a, a doomsday device, or you have like <laughs> I remember a, when I had one of those. <laughs> maybe not a doomsday device, but just like like one of those technologies that that could be really good for mankind unless it falls in the wrong hands. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to know how to use things, and you have to be very careful. You have to have a balance. Uh, we can't text with people all day long and stop reading books. It's bad for your brain. You know, there's something... There, I, I just started uh, listening to an audio book. I mean, it's, it's convenient for me. I can stick it on my phone. I can listen to it when I'm out in the world doing things. I'm not judging. So, uh, so I was listening to On the Road by Jack Kerouac, read, incidentally, by Matt Dillon. And, uh, Interesting. Yeah, I thought that was an odd choice, but he's doing well, so or he did well because it's not like he's reading it to me. But uh, it's really nice of that guy to show up and ride around <laughs> your car with me. <laughs> he just gets the book out. He fits in my pocket. It's great. <laughs> but uh, would you would you stand on my phone for me, please, Mister Dillon? <laughs> You're like you're so much better than those CDs I get from the library. You have, you didn't <laughs> skip one time. Not even when we hit the bumps. <laughs> oh god. That's really funny to me. I was going to make a joke about him using his finger as a bookmark, but, you know, that goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, was I going with this? <laughs> oh, yeah. So right there at the beginning of this novel, On the Road by Jack Kerouac, the, uh, there's, there's a character who is trying to sound intelligent. He's just this kid who pretty much goes in and out of prison or something to that effect. And, uh, He's he's trying to become an intellectual, and I find that interesting. He goes to Kerouac to learn to write, but here's this guy who uses this uh, very degenerated form of speech, and uh, he speaks this kind of jive talk. And uh, uh, maybe I'm wrong about some of the terminology here, but Jack Kerouac, being one of the being one of the beat poets or poets, one of the beat writers from the '50s, mm-hmm. had this uh, fascination with uh, the way. Uh, black urban culture would uh, speak and conduct themselves. So therefore there would be this like white Ebonics movement. and that kind of thing? Like a, well, the precursor to Ebonics. Oh, I see, okay. So we'd have this... Uh, I this, didn't know when that phrase was t- was coined. So. I think Ebonics really was... Well, I think Ebonics has been around for a while, but I think it was actually coined in the 90s. I think it was. Oh, really? It wasn't until then? Wow. I think I could be wrong. I could be very wrong, but I re- I'm pretty certain it wasn't. It was definitely past the 70s. I once got my hands on an Ebonics Bible. <laughs> it was the Bible written in Ebonics. You see, here's the thing. It was really cool. Ebonics, Ebonics I find interesting, but I do not consider it a language. No, I don't think so either. It was it was cool in a novelty sort of way. I was like, there someone are, did this? There are classes. You can go to colleges and there, there are Ebonics classes. They will teach you to speak Ebonics. I'm not kidding. These see, exist. the thing is... I, I I never really I never realized that there was really much of a standard for ebonics. Well, there's a ebonics works as a language in a way of a transposing like I forget at the moment, but nouns and verbs and and adjectives and and putting things around and instead of uh, instead of saying are you say be and things like that. Oh, okay. So, so there are certain standards that that just come to the top. There's certain words that you use in place of other words you would use, and then in a different order. Mm-hmm. Weird. Okay. So, but uh, the reason why Ebonics bothers me, it's not so much that people use it, that but if you consider it a language, then Pig Latin's a language. Yeah. So, and Pig Latin is not a language. That's Esperanto. So, see, it bothers me that people would consider this stuff a language because uh, it is English morphed. There is nothing about Ebonics. You, you're not going to find a word from Ebonics that doesn't appear in the English, vernac- English vernacular. It does not appear there. Yeah, well, would, you, 
would you say uh, would you say tech speak is exactly the same way? See, I that, see that's becoming more and more like, like I mean, like like there are people who are thinking of it nearly like a language because I mean, you know, there are there are certain standard acronyms you use and things like that. I don't know. I'm just I wonder if it's far fetched to to expect of several years from now that there will be people who will speak entirely in tech speak. It scares see, me. Hope not. I think it's strange when people do that. Because well, first of all, we've addressed this. Cap more specifically has addressed this particular one. But uh, somebody saying "OMG," saying it out loud, yeah, it's the same number of syllables, so that's pointless. <laughs> now, somebody saying "I lolled so hard," oh, that bothers me, but I understand it to some extent. Like uh, it's a, it's a slang. So somebody will say something because it's a slang. You know, they'll they'll and, like ain't. It wasn't a word for a long, long time, but it made sense. We we knew what that meant. Yeah, and and nowadays you can say it without nearly as many people saying that's not a word. Quit saying that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then there's certain uh, acronyms in internet and tech speak, which I think are nearly a synonymous thing to say now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I I I think there's certain acronyms that people will say just so that they aren't actually cursing and using f words. Mm-hmm. And that's not necessarily good either. <laughs> um, no. You know, for a while there, I was saying those words because I thought they were funny, like uh, F-U-X instead of the uh, actual word. Oh, yeah? So uh, I thought that was funny, and I typed that into a to a to uh, to a, an instant message system, and somebody said, you realize I don't care if you cuss, right? And I said, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> so especially when I, I eventually turned that into facts, so... I think I think there was a period Facts for a while where I was saying WTF and OMG out loud um, um, <laughs> some just to see if people would catch me on it. I was, it was like a social experiment mm-hmm. because it was bugging me when people were doing that, and I was wondering just how commonplace it was becoming. So in in, in various uh, circles, I would start saying that just to see if anybody would call me on it. Mm-hmm. See, WTF makes sense to me because it's basically uh, censoring yourself. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was that was what I was getting at earlier. Uh, OMG I to still, some extent could be a self censorship, but uh Yeah, yeah, it could. Typically no. And even then even then self censorship is kind of funny. If you're willing to give us the idea that you've said it, then you're obviously intending that we know what those words are. And really is your vernacular so limited that you can't say that in another way? Yeah. I mean there's there is certain things. There, there is certain things. There are certain things that people it's will say. It's getting to us too, isn't it, Vince? Well, that's it's getting bad. That's something I'd actually like to address. Here. Yeah, sure. There's, uh, in my vernacular, the way I talk every day, the way I speak every day, I have these uh, bits of slang that, you know, poke into my, uh, in, into my, uh, my regular everyday speech and my regular everyday thought. I mean, I'm one of these people who will say like and you know. Sure. I think that. I don't know when that developed, but uh, I know it definitely developed during my generation. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think having those little unconscious things are even saying I know right to some extent is forgivable, although it's annoying. <laughs> but uh, but uh, having slang I don't think is a bad thing. No, I it's, don't either. Not necessarily. It becomes a common type of speech. I mean, it's it's... It's a vulgarity, if you will, but just meaning that it's common. I think in some ways, new new words and and uh, you know new new speech is gonna kind of start off as slang until it becomes a regular thing. I mean, like you mm-hmm. know when when Shakespeare was making up words and then he was putting them in in his plays, you know they became commonplace later. But what were they when they started? Yeah, they were basically slang. If you're making up your own words and then you start using them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean. I, I, I've heck, I've done this. Uh, I've made up words and then gotten people to start using them. Uh, I I started saying phantasmic a few years back and started getting a lot of friends. That, I'm probably not the first person who said that, but I hadn't heard it before I started saying it. I started getting getting friends to say phantasmic. I heard it on a TV show the other day. Phantasmic? Yeah. See, I'd love to say that I like actually originated that, but I probably didn't. But uh, <laughs> the character did. I think the character had just turned into a ghost, and he's and somebody's like, "How do you feel?" He says. Phantasmic. Well, that would be a pun, which is entirely different. <laughs> but he did say phantasmic. <laughs> uh, hmm. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, with slang. 
No, I think I what it what it all boils down to, Vince, is we shouldn't forget that there are different ways to say the same thing. Mm-hmm. What we really don't want to happen, even with slang, even with text speaking, with whatever whatever else we have, I think that some of the stuff we're trying to simplify language. And I think that's bad because it gets to where it's really difficult to express yourself. You don't have different ways to say to say the same thing because there are different degrees of something. Uh, mm-hmm. For instance, and and, um, and I'm borrowing this example from uh, from my stepdad. Uh, Jeff and I had this had this conversation together once, and I really liked the example he used. So I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll bring it up here. Uh, he said there. I, th- I think this was Jeff who said this. Uh, I'm going to give him credit for it anyway. Mm-hmm. I think I think he said this, and uh, he he was talking about how. All of the different words we used to use to express female beauty have very often in our modern day and age been summed up with the word hot. Yeah. Uh, When men see women they find attractive, very often they say one of maybe three or four words, and very often it turns out to be hot. Uh, but but there are uh, there are a bazillion different ways to say that, and there are and, and more importantly, uh, there are they're not all just synonyms. There are mm-hmm. different degrees of hotness, or mm-hmm. more to the point, beauty. So you know, uh, she's lovely, she's beautiful, she's attractive, uh, and it goes the list goes on and on. Uh, uh, she's pretty. Well, pretty is is less than beautiful. What is hot? Hot is a generic term. Mm-hmm. What is what what does that mean? Like how how attractive do you have to be before you are hot? <laughs> uh, right? And, and 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 after a while I feel like uh it, it gets I, I think it just gets bad for people's vernaculars if they get used to only saying things one way when there are different degrees to say them, because then they start to forget some of the other words they could be using. And that can be bad. No, that's a terrific point. I mean words will then take on a all meanings, and therefore any meaning is meaningless. Mm. So therefore, like, uh, I forget who I was... It was a stand-up comedian who said this, I'm pretty certain it was, who said, uh, if you think that is awesome, what would happen if something really amazing, just totally out of this world, happened to you? How would you describe it? That is truly awesome. And uh, he had lots of jokes in there, and that was really funny, but he made a terrific point. Yeah, that's that's really great. If you call... uh, uh, finding a toy in your Cheerios awesome, then uh, what do you call an alien invasion? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. do you call the second coming of Christ? Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. And I would say that at least you, I can't speak for everyone, but I would say that at, that at least you and I are both culprits of this all the time. Yeah, I say awesome a lot. <laughs> I do too. You know what else I say constantly? Fantastic. Mm-hmm. I keep catching myself on this on, 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 on our videos. Well, that's well, just because you're secretly see... the doctor. Right. And I'll say, <laughs> how, many t- how many times have I said fantastic so far in, in, in a video and I'll be like, oh no, there are different things I could be saying. If this is fantastic, then what about this other thing that's not nearly as fantastic as that, right? See, I've latched on to, a, uh, to an extremely generic term, sweet. Yeah. Oh, like, what is that? That's sweet. Which means it's appealing to me on some sort of aesthetic level. Yeah, I never used to say sweet because I thought that, that was something that, that was that was just like for jocks and stuff. Mm-hmm. Back in the 90s when we were in high school, that was true, but now it's kind of become more commonplace and a lot more people use it. I found these days that I use a lot of like older slang that was really cool when we were kids but nobody uses anymore. Like, boss. Boss. <laughs> I love boss. I, I and I and I use that quite a bit. I'll As in like, saying that's totally boss. Dude. That was boss. When I was when I was uh, like twelve or thirteen, I used to say bad. Bad isn't good. Oh yeah, I hated. Remember that. that? I'm glad that kind of went the way of the dinosaurs. Yeah, that and you go, girl, and uh, you the man. Yeah. Oh, you the man's still kind of around. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Like that guy's a man. There are other things I wish would go away, like that that have been around and stuck around, like uh, like dog. Fran Drescher. <laughs> you know, I grew up in small you know, town like Kansas. So. People dog. I never understood that. I grew up in small town Kansas, and when I went to college, I was in a weight room, and I was talking to the guy who was the weight room attendant, and I said, uh, I asked him a question. He's like, "Oh yeah, you got a dog." I'm like, "Did did you just call me dog? Did you just tell you you have a dog? <laughs> you got a dog?" It baffled me for a second. I had to come out of my own little world and figure out what had just happened. I went, "Oh." Oh, oh, slang. That's right. I, f- I forgot about that. 
You know. <laughs> I I found that I used awesome the word awesome so much that a few years back I coined a phrase that I still use and, and actually a lot of my friends use use this one now too. Eight shades of awesome. Oh yeah. And I think that we just use it because we're because it's funny and we're acknowledging the fact that this is happening. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where where we use awesome for so many different things now that we have to find a way to up the ante on awesomeness. It's not just awesome; it's every shade of it. Yes, up to eight. Up to eight. <laughs> what a, and what about epic? Mm-hmm. That's been way blown out of proportion. See, epic. When people say the, word, I, I never use the word epic as a slang term. Whenever I use epic, I'm referring to something that happened in a movie that, within the context, would actually be epic. Yeah, me too. But I found that I've gotten really subconscious about using the word. <laughs> Where I'll be because it's being thrown around so much that I'll have to be really careful and be like, okay, is it actually epic? Is there another word I could be using instead mm. of epic? Because the problem is, you and I talk about fiction a, a lot. Uh, in the work that we do, and we talk about, yeah, you know, just with reviews and things, and more importantly, we talk about science fiction and fantasy and comic books. There's things that happen that are actually epic, and sometimes there are things that are ap- that are that are, that are that are epic, even in the sense of like epic poetry and stuff. And mm-hmm. I still feel subconscious saying it because it's all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a, in a way, uh, that's that's the. Uh... <laughs> The person who tries to use English properly, that's their dilemma. Oh, yeah, okay, well, they, that, that's that's fair. But, you know, I, I, I don't I don't like to, you know, I try not to be un- unoriginal as much as possible, and so, you yeah. know, I, I like to use, um, you know, other words to describe things when I can find them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the same time, you don't want to be elitist, though. Well, no, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to single people out. You don't want to be like, oh, that person can't follow what I'm saying now because I'm using words they don't know. Yeah. Like, well, that guy's... Uses a bonnet, so obviously he doesn't know what I'm talking about. That's that's not exactly true. I I, I played uh, I played shot put. That makes no sense. I threw shot put on a track team with uh, with a guy who had an extremely thick Georgia accent, and uh, he would uh, like drop words off the ends of sentences and would be really difficult to understand what he said. He was good humored about it though, and uh, he said to me in his Georgia accent, he said, "I know you guys talk down here. I know you guys talk down here," and then he cleared his throat and he said. How are you doing this evening? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the guy's name is Jermaine, terrific guy, but that was really funny to me. And uh, you see, that's the thing is that that's that's not exactly the way people talk in Kansas versus how they talk in uh, in Georgia or mm-hmm. speak or whatever the word is. I don't know English. Don't ask me. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I think there's a difference between you know the the cultural um, like like slang, cultural vernacular, what have you that that, that, that you're used to. And just being educated, mm-hmm. you know, like just because you talk a certain way doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to, uh, you know, you know, learn, learn new words, read things that were uh, that were written in a different voice that we just don't use anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like in college, I took classes where where uh, we had to we had to muddle through some old English. Yeah, I know people who can't muddle through Shakespeare, and I know people who can't muddle through. Crime novels of the fifties. <laughs> you know, speaking of crime novels from the fifties, <laughs> I was in a, I was in one of my friend's stores. I have a friend that owns a, a comic book and toy store in Humboldt, Kansas, and I was in a store and I and I said to the guy, "Man, that's a lot of scratch," and uh, he said, "What are you from the twenties? <laughs> scratch? Who says that?" And uh, this is the same guy that called on, called me for saying "bub" to people. I said, "What's up, bub?" And uh, he said, what are you, Wolverine now? <laughs> I said, no, my dad says, Bob. <laughs> I just got used to it. So so there are certain things that I think we pick things up and just uh, assimilate them into our vocabulary because we think they're, they sound interesting or, or, or whatever. Basically, I think, I think profanity, I think, uh, I think, uh, oh. It's the word I was trying to slang, because that's the word of the day. <laughs> yeah. Profanity, slang, things like this are, are welcome into a vocabulary because it gives you more ways of describing things. And, you know, if you're a writer of some kind, then it gives you more ways for your characters to describe things. So maybe you wouldn't say, that's eight shades of awesome, but maybe your character, Captain Logan, would. 
<laughs> yeah, and I think where where it becomes a problem, where, where where it becomes a dilemma, is just when you use some of those words too too often and in place of words that would better suit the idea that you're trying to convey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, something happened the other day. Well, oh yeah, well, could you describe it for me? It was sweet. Could you be a little more specific? It was awesome. Um, those seem contradictory. <laughs> which which one would that be? Uh, it it was epic. It was oh, a, come on. It was eight shades of phantasmic and sweetness. Well, who was involved? Oh, there was this hot chick. Well, how hot was she? <laughs> like, oh, dude, totally hot. Be more specific, like awesomely hot. Thank you. <laughs> you know, as this becomes more and more of a problem, you, you, you know the people that it affects the most negatively, Vince? The next generation. Well, that no, there's there's that. Um, but uh, <laughs> you know, all, all the guys from the second generation of Star Trek. More specifically, um, I'm I'm thinking of uh, police sketch artists. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why they're always trying to arrest that one guy, this generic looking guy. There he is. He was uh, he was like between the the height of four foot and six feet tall. He was he was between the the shades of Irish to to uh, to Nubian, <laughs> and uh, he he may have even had a Scottish brew, or been from India. I can't quite tell. So anyway, continue your thought. We, I apologize. What are, what are we looking for? A hot chick. What else do we know? She was wearing clothes. <laughs> Oh oh! Uh, what what color was her shirt? Red. What co- what what color was her pants? He wasn't looking at her pants. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Oh, so maybe there's even indicators here of uh, a, a degeneration in culture. <laughs> yeah, may- yeah, maybe so. Well, that's yeah, that's that's even a whole other topic that we could certainly get into. Um, I like what you said earlier when you said when you said we shouldn't be elitist about this, and you're and, and you're absolutely right. Um, we had. A, and, I, and I'm not singling anybody, anybody out when I when I when I mention this. I'm not making fun of this person. I just thought it was interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, we had somebody who who left us a comment, and of course, you never know the age of, of of people who leave comments too. I mean, you know, this guy could have been in, you know could have been in junior high or elementary school for all I know. But uh, somebody watched one of my superhero rewinds last week and left the and left a comment in all capital letters complaining that there were too many big words. That's amusing. And I only bring it up because. Uh, I don't think I have a very large vernacular. I like to know. Uh, I I I I'd always like to get a much larger vocabulary than than I, than I even have. Um, I always kind of rebuke myself for not reading as much as I ought to. And um, you know, the the more the more you read, the larger your vernacular is going to be. Uh, you know what I think it is. It's not so much. A, and I'm not trying to downplay your vocabulary here, but I think a, part of it is a, a not so much an excess of big words. Or more just an excess of big ideas. Oh, per- yeah, per- perhaps. I think that some people have a, uh, a a distaste for trying to read into things. Oh well, that yeah, that that, that may be true. And of course, that's getting in, in, into you know even an entirely other topic. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's very that's very possible. But it, but it, it really, it's just the words I was using in that rewind were were, were too large large for this person. Again, depending on how old he or she was, um, boy, I sure hope that. Uh, that that kids are getting the uh, you know are getting the uh, access to the reading materials and and you know vocabulary lessons and things that they should be getting in school like that mm-hmm. that th- that bothers me you know what I mean like if we can blame this on parents or or, or or the school system and it's not just a kid who's refusing to learn that I don't know that's sad I, I've I've heard I've heard things from um, from uh, from parents and from kids uh, before in different areas that. Uh, we're not getting like spelling tests and things like that in elementary school anymore. Boy, that bothers me. Mm-hmm. If that's the case, like, are we really treating this like now that we have spell checks and things that we no longer need to uh, need to actually know how to spell? Uh, just because we have calculators, we no longer have to know math, and just because we have Wikipedia, we no longer <laughs> have to read and memorize history lessons. What that's... happens when you have to write a, an essay in a class with, yeah. on pencil to paper? Mm-hmm. That happens. You're, it's required. If you go through the college system, you will have to do this at some point. Yeah, and you know what makes that kind of thing a heck of a lot easier? Having some knowledge already. <laughs> Having basic skills that you learn from that point in time. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, so much of uh, of essay and paper writing 
uh, so much of good essay and paper writing comes from uh, like you know personal experience that you already have, and then you you and, and, and knowledge you you you've already built up, and then you extrapolate from a text and from you know whatever you're doing research on or whatever um, with with things you already know, and you know it's it's not it's not enough to just read material and write about it. You have to have those critical thinking skills, and I don't know, man. Uh, some, sometimes, sometimes I feel like uh, that's that's not being taught either. Mm -hmm. Well, and the, the I don't know. Um, I don't know the, about the modern school practices. The language thing is just one more piece of that giant puzzle. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's been a long time since I've been in grade school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and I mean, you know, I I, I don't I don't feel like uh, grade school was up to the par that I wish it was when I was going through it either. Mm -hmm. I, I feel the same way, and I feel the same way about high school. Like we're so. a product, we're a product of our generation. I'm no good at memorizing things. I'm surprisingly decent at it. Oh, that's good. Maybe I can get some of that skill from you for Christmas <laughs> next year. Like it just happened. I just suddenly realized I could do it. Bless you. <laughs> well, uh, we're we're over time already, but let's go ahead and go and go to rants. This will be a little bit longer of an episode this time. Oh, and uh, why don't you go ahead, Vince? So maybe I should touch on this in, in, in my rewind, but uh, I was watching American Psycho with, uh, with a college class. And uh, in the moment when uh, Patrick Bateman kills this homeless man, nobody even flinched. But then the homeless man had a dog, and Patrick Bateman stomped the dog. And everybody gasped. The, oh my god, he just killed that dog. <laughs> it's a dog. He just killed a man. You realize he just killed a man, yes? Yeah. Did you not have a problem with the homeless man being killed? <laughs> do you have more regard for a dog than you do with a homeless man? Anyway, that bothers me quite a lot. Don't you think that's desensitization? You see, I think it's it's potentially a desensitization of uh, of murder towards or of murder of people. Yeah. Or that's what we've seen a lot more in movies. You see. The, uh, the the liberal side goes, don't you think the homeless man's human? Well, yes, he is human. But that nobody flinched when he killed the hookers. So, oh, yeah. Hmm. So nobody... It's just strange to me that people will accept the death of a human on screen so much more easily than they'll accept the death of a dog. Well, maybe somehow it was just harder to watch for people, depending on how it was done. I mean, I didn't see the movie. We, we see the homeless man being stabbed. Okay. And then he stands up. And off the camera, he stomps the dog. I was just saying, maybe it's more it's more effective kill. I mean, you're the one who's always you're 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 one of those people that's always uh, talking about how uh, you know less is more when it comes to horror. That's films. a good point. I mean, we we don't see the dog get killed. We don't all we hear all we see is Bateman kick, and then we hear the dog have a death throw, and that's it. So maybe that's more horrifying to more more horrifying <laughs> to people. But uh, that's when you're watching. That's when you're watching Psycho and you're cooking bacon. <laughs> Horror fry. That sounds like a good series, actually. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna talk to TNT and see if we can get that going. I know what the theme song is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> Beans and corn. <laughs> it's a good song, by the way, Louis Jordan. So yeah, that bothers me that people care more about the death of a dog than they do a person. Anyway, there's lots of different things in there, and we could probably even try to develop a topic out of this, but still. Uh, really briefly, uh, the radio is getting really interesting as time goes on, and music I like starts getting to where people can't decide where to put it on the radio. <laughs> Have you noticed this, Vince? Have you noticed how oldies are going away, and they're still oldies stations, but they're not playing what they were playing on oldies on oldies stations when we were kids, right? Um, I think the rule is like 25 years, but it's getting to where like disco is on oldies stations now, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal if they were still also playing the good 50s and 60s stuff that they used to play, but but like it's gets going away. So we're seeing not only disco, but I think we're already starting to see some stuff that used to be played on classic rock stations, like you know early to mid 70s stuff uh, getting played on all these stations and then that's kicking out the, the the older stuff well where does that stuff go do we just is it just gone do we just stop playing it like or do we just assume that no one wants to listen to it anymore because it's too old ah like that's 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 awful at the same time 
it's getting to the classic rock stations too, because now they're playing REM, and that freaks me out. <laughs> because when I was a kid, REM was uh, alternative rock, and now it's classic rock. Wow, like REM ain't Kansas and Sticks, y'all. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that would make Metallica classic, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it'd be, the, it'd be the same time, except that it's harder than that stuff, so Metallica still manages to stay on the hard rock stations, only because of what it sounds like. R.E.M. does not anything like classic rock to me. And no, not, not me either. That's, that's, that's what's weird about it. I think, personally, I think we need to have different names for different things. Well, yeah, I, I, do, I do too, but I... Now, I will say this, uh, because there's another side to this. We are starting to see some new kinds of stations popping up, and so this might get fixed... Uh, with, with, with some of this going on because uh, there's, there are two stations out here in Kansas City that are now uh, devoted... There, there's one called Gen X, uh, which is devoted mostly to 90s rock. And uh, that's kind of cool, mm-hmm. mostly just because that's the music I grew up with and I really like having it all on one station. That's kind of cool. And they'll play some late 80s stuff uh, and, and, and other things. The, the thing is, of course, that they've kind of lumped it all together where they'll play anything that was uh, popular in the 90s uh, that's that's uh, anywhere around that genre. So they're playing like uh, like some hip-hop and stuff also, which is a little bit irritating because uh, <laughs> just because it got older didn't make it any better. <laughs> Just because it's in the same decade doesn't mean it belongs with the rest of that kind of music. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, if I'm listening to hip-hop, would I really want to hear R.E.M.? No. So. But that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that we're in just this really bizarre crossroads right now, um, musically, where, you know, there's not a lot of great new stuff being made that I'm finding uh, in the genres of the stuff that I was, you know, listening to uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. And then... The stations can't decide where to put that stuff. So, mm-hmm. I think part of the issue is that they're trying to, uh, like, I think the general consumer that things are marketed to are people who are the high school, junior high age. So therefore, REM to them is classic. I think it depends on which station you're talking about. Because, well, yeah, like, that. you know, the classic rock stations certainly aren't that way. Uh, they're 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 banking on um, the baby boomers. Hmm. I was just tossing out an idea anyway. Well, that's cool. It's just, I mean, I, I've I've gone to a couple of, uh, of of you know classic arena rock type concerts lately, and overwhelmingly, your age group there is forty five to sixty. Hmm. Um, I was the youngest person I could find, and I won't tell you which band I went to because I'll get nothing but uh, uh, but people making fun of me. It was Ozzy Osbourne. No, see, I wouldn't get made fun of nearly as much for that. That's what I'm saying. It was Ozzy Osbourne, as far as you know. <laughs> Oh, my mom wanted to go to a concert, and I went with her. So anyway, uh, that's all I'm going to say. Anyway, thanks a lot for listening to Geeks Not Nerds, the podcast. And uh, we'll see you again next week. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Leave comments and stuff. <laughs>